Hello, hello. <clears throat> Today is July 6th, 2021. And let's see if a couple people want to drop jump on. But it is my first, yesterday was my last day of summer, and it's my first day of school. And I am starting pharmacology. And I listened to one lecture so far, and it just made me want to look up uh, drugs about dialysis. Um, so like the first lecture was very basic. It was pretty cool. It talked a lot about metabolism and it seems obvious now, but the liver metabolizes a lot of the drugs and then obviously the kidneys excrete it. They get rid of it. And I was thinking about some of the drugs that we give on dialysis and some of the drugs that we avoid. And the first drug I want to talk about is azyclovir, specifically for uh, shingles. Uh, if you if you want to impress your provider at all, if a uh, patient comes in and they say, and they say, um, "Hey, I have shingles. I I started I started azyclovir, and the very first thing you need to do in the clinic is to assess if it's still open, if it's still blistering, because depending on your facility's protocol, I know where I work, best practice is when those blisters are still open, they need to be on airborne precautions. And it gets a little more specific if um, you've had chicken pox or not, but <laughs> excuse me, if you don't know if everybody in the clinic has had chicken pox, so they need to be isolated separately. And the second thing is you need to look at how much dosing of their azyclovir, because this has happened to me where patients have come in, they started on azyclovir, and the physician or the provider or whoever did, didn't know they were on dialysis, whatever reason, and they were dosed on just a general azyclovir dosing, which is 800 milligrams five times a day. And then I got this book, so I'm like, oh. I'm gonna look up the Zyclovir. And oh, I just, there's so much good information in this book. So if somebody is supposed to be taking 800 milligrams five times daily, if they are on dialysis, it should be, if it's 800 milligrams five times daily while awake, and then 800 milligrams every eight hours if they're on dialysis. And if they are getting, so it's eight, 16, three times a day versus five times a day, and they can, get overdosed on the Zyclovir and get really confused and start seeing things and start hallucinating things. And if they go to the ED because, you know, they're not feeling good and they have toxic Zyclovir in their blood, the only thing that will get rid of that Zyclovir is dialysis. So if you, if your provide, if your patient's like, oh yeah, I'm taking 800 milligrams five times a day, you're going to be like, oh, I need to call the provider because this person is going to get sick from this much Zyclovir. So that's the first drug I wanted to talk about because that happened to me and I didn't realize that that's what happened and he started having hallucinations and we realized it was from the azyclovir. And then the other drug that I want to talk about is lisinopril because that gets very, doesn't get very complicated, but with our dialysis patients, it's very specific to their injury. If they are coming to the clinic in acute kidney injury, then lisinopril needs to be avoided. Uh, it, let's see, where did it say on here? So, so if they're, um, it says even if they start lisinopril, you need to therapy discontinue, discontinue, DC, DC therapy if serum creatinine increases by 30% in the first two months. And it also says if their creatinine clearance is less than 10 mils per minute, if, you know, if they have any kind of kidney disease, consider alternate therapy risk of adverse effects or complications, e.g. hyperkalemia or kidney failure. So anybody that has a kidney injury needs to stay away from lisinopril because it can cause further injury. However, all of our, a lot, many of our ESRD patients are on lisinopril. They already don't have kidney function, so we cannot make it worse. And they might need lisinopril to help tolerate dialysis. I found that a lot of our patients whose blood pressure trends up at the end of dialysis, where, you know, we're taking blood out of the system and the body thinks that they're bleeding. You know, we take 300 mils of blood out at a time and the body thinks it's bleeding. So it starts releasing that angiotensin um, 
that enzyme to raise the blood pressure. So a lot of the times, if you call the physician, I found in my experience, if you call the physician and say, hey, you know, the blood pressure start out, start out fine. And at the end of the dialysis, they're 190 over 100. They're like, they'll ask about meds. They'll be like, are they on lisinopril? And that might, might be a medication that they're going to start. Um, so that is, let's see, hemodialysis. Daily dosing, so three times weekly, it says, it is dia dialyzable. So if lisinopril does get um, taken out with dialysis, it is removed with dialysis. So here it recommends that they take lisinopril after dialysis, but again, that is, that is up to the provider's discretion. Uh, so that's cool, lisinopril. Bad for AKI patients. AKI patient come in. If they're on lisinopril, you want to call your provider and be like, hey. And they'll be like, oh, Lindsay, thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. Let's take them off of lisinopril. What's the third medication that comes to mind? We talked about azyclovir. We talked about lisinopril. Third medication has to do with pain. It's not Tylenol. Yes, ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. See, but I didn't really see as many things. Oh, here, Kadogo, provide following. So the Kadoki Kadigo guidelines for renal impairment, if their GFR is 30 to 60, avoid use in patients with renal disease. If their GFR is less than 30, avoid use. It is not dialyzed in dialysis, it's not removed. Um, I, I do found any AKI patients, they should not be taking ibuprofen. If they have any history of AKI and they've recovered, they should not be taking ibuprofen because I've seen people come into the hospital with acute renal failure because they were taking ibuprofen. That being said, I do know a few of our patients that have arthritis and ibuprofen is the only thing that manages their pain. Talk to the provider, the provider's like, yep, they're on dialysis. If they need to take ibuprofen, please tell them to take it. That is it is cleared by, by them. That's really all I wanted to say. I'm really excited for this pharm pharmacology class. I really am interested in how drugs work and think dosage and I don't know, everything else I'm gonna learn in that class. Do you guys have any questions? Any, anything you wanna talk about, please chime in. I'll give you guys a minute and I'll get Bubba over here. Come here, Bubba. Papa. Any questions? Going, going, going gone. Thank you guys so much for chiming in. I appreciate you so much. I hope you guys have a good lab week if it's lab week for you guys. And I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.